So in the West Bank, in Ramallah, there was a huge 10,000 person protest. Um, and they started walking towards Jerusalem. I love that, okay? Now, of course, there's claims of violence, and then the Israelis shot at them. And they, first they say they had the rubber bullets, and then the crowd dispersal, and then two people were killed. The, uh, and they say that they were throwing Molotov cocktails. I don't know. It's entirely possible that somebody in the crowd was, which is an incredibly stupid idea, right? Yeah. It's also possible that there's propaganda on both sides, right? So, but if it was actually peaceful, a march. I would do that every day. I'd make yeah. that into 100,000 people. Everybody in the West Bank walk to Jerusalem. But it has to be a march that doesn't say we're going to kill you. Yeah. That's right. That's, That's the right. thing. If you're saying death to these people, who cares if you have 100,000 of them marching? They want to kill you. Right. Yeah. I think that was assumed in your example. Absolutely. <laughs> you're not no. What they've that. got to do is we want our freedom. Yeah. Like I, the Palestinians are maddening. They are the world's Worst marketers, right? So on Friday they have a day of rage, but the West already like is so prone to call you terrorists. Why would you do a day of rage? What's wrong with you? Why don't you do a day of sympathy, empathy? You know, hey, look at us. Instead of saying we're going to destroy them, which you have no hope of doing, and I hope you never come close to, why don't you say we want our freedom? I mean, come yeah. on, isn't there any leader with any damn sense over there to say, let's take the 10,000 people, let's turn it into 100,000 and walk towards Jerusalem and say, enough is enough, 47 years, just keep saying 47, 47, 47, and say, when is it going to be enough? Give us our freedom. We're, we're occupied, give us our freedom. And, and if you do it peacefully and you keep marching, and the Israelis keep firing at you, I know a lot of people it's think it's really naive, but it's not. Eventually, the world will say, God damn it, enough is enough, right? Yeah. It happened in India, it happened with civil rights here, it happened in South Africa, it can happen in the occupied territories too. But you gotta do it the right way. I agree with you, it but it's really. In civil rights here if you had a group like Hamas leading the civil rights movement. Well, but I mean, it there wouldn't were have more extremist prone to violence sections of the civil rights movement. Thankfully, they just didn't win they out. They were the leadership of the civil rights movement, though. Yeah, but I'm, I'm saying that that perhaps we could see that switch over in Israel as well. Like there, there are relative or Palestine as well. I mean, there are there are relatively more violent and relatively less violent factions right now. Unfortunately, Hamas is winning in terms of uh, public approval inside of the Palest Palestinian community. But that doesn't have to be the case necessarily, so especially after this uh, occupation or after this attack. Look, Fatah can take on the role of uh, Martin Luther King if Hamas is the more extreme version of the civil rights there's, movement that existed. There's no right? Martin Luther King in Fatah. Uh, well, look, it's got to be somebody who comes no, but, from outside these organizations. But even Shimon Peres, you know, who's been around forever, <laughs> is now he's president of Israel, about to step down, um, and and he's been prime minister before, etc. Says the best partner we've ever had for peace is Abu Mazen, who is the leader of Fatah right now. Okay, that's Mahmoud Abbas, and and every American says it, every Israeli negotiator says it. He's as close as it gets, and now he's really unpopular because he won't resort to violence, whereas Hamas resorts to violence, and the Palestinians are enormously frustrated. So they think, well, Hamas is doing something. What are you doing, right? Well, then get up and march. Do it your way, do it the peaceful way. And what you do, and if you're at the front of that march every day and you're willing to take the rubber bullets, that shows courage, right? And people respect courage. So if he was in the middle of that march and leading that march every day, I think the, all of a sudden the approval ratings in Palestine might begin to shift a little bit. Like, hey, Hamas says they're willing to fight back, but Hamas's leader is not in the occupied territories, he's comfortably somewhere else, right? But there is. Abu Mazen ready to take a bullet for this, and he's marching in every single day, getting arrested if he has to every single day. And that's how you can make change. You've got to shame them into it.